Hi everybody, this is Julian from AWS and I am back with another video on SageMaker Pipelines. This is a follow-up to yesterday's video, so please feel free to watch this one first uh, as uh, this one actually assumes you run the pipeline from that video, okay? So here, uh, what I want to show you is the Git workflow for SageMaker Pipelines. In the previous video, we created the pipeline, we deployed it, we saw how we could move the model from staging to prod, etc. And now I'd like to show you how you could work and, and modify your training code and deploy again using pipelines. Okay, so let's get started. Um, the starting point is uh, the pipeline that we deployed yesterday. Okay, so no change here. And uh, we see we have a model. Okay, just uh, recapping quickly. And if we see the, the history here, remember what we did. Uh, first, we trained it um, with a status of uh, pending manual approval. Then using the update status button, we approved it and it was deployed for staging. And then wearing our uh, ops hat, we actually promoted the model to production and deployed another endpoint for that, okay? So this is the model that we have. So now let's go back to our code. Okay, so that's gonna be in the model build directory, pipelines, abalone, remember we use that data set. Okay, and here's our code. Okay, so let's say we want to train a model with different uh, hyperparameters maybe. Okay, so we see the, the estimator here that's used in the training step. Okay, and we see the hyperparameters here. So let's say I want to try training with a different depth. Okay, this is XJBoost, it's a tree-based algo, so we can set the maximum depth for the tree. Okay, and let's say, all right, why not try, I don't know, 10. Okay, so let's, uh, let's try and do this. So we can just save this. And, and then we can go to Git and we can see we have a change here. Okay, so let's stage the change. We can view the diff. Okay, that's the correct thing here. And let's add some message here. So update max depth to 10 and then we can commit, okay? And yeah, sure. We want to know who did this. Okay, so I committed the changes. Now I'm going to push them. And of course, this is going to update the Git repository. And remember, this one is hosted in uh, code commit. So as this repository is the source for our pipeline, uh, committing a change to it should trigger the pipeline. So if we check the status of our pipeline, we see there is a new execution here. Okay. And we see the different steps being, uh, being executed. Okay. After a few minutes, uh, pre-processing is complete and we are now training the model. Okay. And yeah, let's wait for a few more minutes and then it's going to move on to evaluation. After a few more minutes, training is complete and we are now moving to evaluation and depending on the uh, mean square error for, for this, we are going to register the model or not. Okay, so let's see if that uh, max depth parameter helped or not. The pipeline is now complete and the model has been registered. So probably uh, accuracy was, uh, or the MSC value was uh, lower than the, the threshold specified in the conditional step. Okay, and I don't think it's really any better than the, yesterday's attempt so the model was registered as we can see here yeah so it should be visible if we go back to the to the pipeline uh, view and we check out the model group yep we see a new version okay and of course it's pending because remember by default we set um, approval status to pending manual approval okay so we would run some more testing on this model and and maybe 
you know, maybe we realize we actually overfit with this model because, you know, depth is too, uh, is too high and, you know, we're not happy with this and we definitely don't want to deploy it. So we could say, well, no, okay, that's not, that's not a good model. So we could update the status and say, this is rejected. Okay. So we could say something like this model overfits don't deploy. Okay. And the pipeline will just not deploy this model. Okay. So whether it's for staging or, or prod, you know, it's, it's not going to happen. Okay, so that's a that's a surefire way to say no. This model should never make it into production. Uh, we can only deploy approved versions. Okay, so we could uh, we could investigate and say, all right, uh, we need to uh, we probably need to revert to uh, to a prior a prior setting. You know, yeah. So maybe max depth. You know, uh, four is what you really want, and. Uh, and yeah, we could probably use a more recent version of XJBoost, right? At the time of recording, one to one is the latest one. Okay, so save this. And then uh, again, go back to uh, Git stage. Okay, we can update the, the commit message. All right, so uh, update true depth, upgrade to XJ boost one to one. Okay. Commit push. Okay. And here we go again. So um, we should see another execution. Okay. So it takes a few, maybe a minute to kick off. And, uh, and so we should see a third execution and we should see a third model okay so let's run this once again just to see the full uh, the full uh, workflow and uh, and we'll call it a day all right well what do you know <laughs> the pipeline failed so um i wasn't expecting this so it's it's a good opportunity to try and debug this and let's see what hap what happens actually so let's click on this open execution details okay so training failed and extraneous hyperparameter found silent. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So it looks like this hyperparameter actually isn't supported or has been removed from uh, the latest version of XJBoost. Okay. So well, let's uh, let's fix it. Let's fix it. Uh, here we go. Yeah. We'll just go and comment this out. Okay. And stage, remove hyper parameter, commit, push. Okay, so now we have to wait a little more for the new pipeline to execute. Wow, suspense is killing me. Okay, so this worked. Just removing that. Uh, um, old hyperparameter just fix it. Okay. So execution succeeded. And if I go to my pipeline model groups, I should see version three. Okay. Which is pending as usual. And well, how is this better? So we can select this. So here's the trick. <laughs> Click on this one. And then, okay, on the Mac, it's uh, command click on the other one, right? Uh, and for non-Mac machines, go and figure it out. And you can right click and say compare model versions. And we can see well, the uh, MSC is much, much better. So the new, uh, the new XJBoost version has uh, probably helped, right? And STD is better as well. So this is a this is a good model, and again I can just go and say yes, this is good. Nice MSC improvement. Deploy this. Okay, and then we'll follow exactly the same the same process as yesterday, and uh, so the model is approved, 
and uh, this is going to trigger um, a staging deployment and then um, I can go and ask the ops team to promote this to prod okay so exact same thing as yesterday all right so this is what I wanted to show you today the git workflow well the day-to-day -day workflow uh, when working with uh, stage maker pipelines and you can see we can do all of it in studio uh, we really don't need to go and look at code pipelines and cloud formation uh, which is what the ops team would uh, would need but for the day-to-day -day machine learning work this is enough we can get the job done i hope this was useful stay tuned for more in the next few days bye, -bye.